First year I had Daniel that I coached him was in JBO baseball when he was 12 years old. We played in the state championship game at the highest level of JBO and ended up getting beaten extra innings. But then as a 13 year old, he led us to a state championship and did the same thing as a 14 year old. And he was not only the best pitcher on those teams, he was the best position player on those teams also. You could tell from an early age, this kid was special as a pitcher. He had kind of a three quarter arm slot. The ball would really run. Along with that, he had great command, great control. He had very, very high expectations of himself. He came to every baseball practice on every team that I ever coached him on, wanting to spend the next two or three hours seeing what he could do to get better as a baseball player. As he moved up in, into high school, became one of the most dominating pitchers in the state of Oregon his junior and senior year, at a time when the state of Oregon was loaded with kids that were going to play Division I baseball, and a lot of them were pitchers. But despite all the tough competition, and after earning an all-league second team selection as a sophomore and an onslaught of accolades as a junior, including All-State third team and the league's Player of the Year award, it was obvious that the six-foot-five standout was head and shoulders above everyone else. Daniel not only was a very good pitcher for us, and he was a power pitcher, you know, as a high school kid that's throwing 90 miles an hour, and had good command, and so obviously that's pretty special. But he was also a very, very good shortstop. I always thought, always felt that Daniel was, other than Barney, was the best shortstop in the state of Oregon. Being one of the best pitchers in the state of Oregon, and when you're not pitching, you're playing shortstop, and you're one of the best shortstops, was pretty special. Some special moments Daniel had through the years was his junior year, where Newberg came to McMahon. They had played in the state championship game the year before. They had a lot of players returning, including Dallas Buck, who, who was the best pitcher in the state that year. That day, Daniel outpitched Buck. We won 3-2, to two, and I think it was the, the turning point for us in the season because we were very young. We only had two seniors on that team, and I think it just uh, by beating them, it convinced our players that uh, we could play with anybody in the state. Later on that year in the summer in a AAA game at uh, Linfield College, it was a rematch with Turpin and Buck, and and the game lasted maybe an hour and 15 minutes. It's the quickest baseball game I've ever been at. It was dominated by the two pitchers. Dallas Buck threw a one-hitter and struck out 12. Daniel Turpin threw a no-hitter and struck out 13 and won one to nothing. His all-around great play as a junior and senior led the Bears to a 31-5 combined record, including two league championships and two straight advancements into the third round of the state playoffs. But Daniel not only dominated games from atop the mound, but from behind the plate as well. Daniel was a strong kid, very athletic, and go along with it, he was a very good hitter. He hit for average, hit for power. His on-base average was good, he didn't strike out. Clutch hitter, I always felt that if Daniel didn't want to pitch in college, he could have made it as a shortstop or a third baseman because he, he, could, he could really hit. If you take his career batting average of 448 with over 60 RBIs, and add it to his career ERA of 135 with over 180 strikeouts, you get one highly recruited player. His name was definitely out there. This might put it in perspective. The very first game of his senior year in high school, I knew there were some professional scouts going to come watch him because a couple of them had called me to see if he was pitching that day. He goes out to warm up in the bullpen and there's 15 professional scouts with radar guns standing around the bullpen and every time he'd throw a pitch in the bullpen, the guns would go up they chart it, he'd throw the next pitch, 15 guns would go up, and that's how he started his senior year. Now, most high school kids, you would think, hey, I'm pretty, you know, I'm pretty cool, you know, I got all these pro scouts watching. Not Daniel. Daniel was always super coachable for me, great listener. If I ask him, the, hey, you need to do it this way, he did it, never argued. All the years I had him, I'm not sure if I had a more coachable kid than Daniel Turpin. My guess is that Daniel got offers from probably every Division I school on the West Coast. Daniel, first First of all, was really a talented kid, was gifted from the beginning, you know what I mean? He had good size, good arm, he was just a good athlete, so I, I was very familiar with Daniel Serpent and I really liked Daniel and I thought he was going to be a great one and he was one of the most highly recruited guys in the state, obviously somebody we really wanted. But Turpin's talents weren't just noticed on the baseball field. As a three-year varsity basketball player, Daniel led the Grizzlies in scoring and rebounding as a junior and senior, and to two winning seasons. The Bears awarded him as their most improved and most valuable player, while the league voted him onto their all-league third and second teams. 
Here's a six foot four, six foot five lanky kid that was very athletic, could really shoot, had good range, good passer, good rebounder. He, he, he was a good basketball player. I've always felt that if he wanted to have spent a lot of time with basketball, he could have easily played college basketball also. But his, his love, his passion was baseball all the way. His hard work and passion for pitching would pay off in his final season at Mack High in 2004. Daniel repeated as the league's MVP, but was also selected onto the All-State First Team and as the Oregon Gatorade Player of the Year. With a slew of full athletic scholarships to Division I colleges to choose from, the lifelong Beaver fan chose to continue his education and baseball career at Oregon State University where he made an immediate impact. I don't think he lost a game here. I think he was 10-0 or something like that, but um, very gifted, got better. But I do know he could have went some other places, probably pitched more. I don't think he could have pitched in any bigger games than he did. I don't think that he would have had the same opportunity maybe to have such a great career in professional baseball. He obviously grew as a pitcher. He grew as a guy as far as confidence goes. Uh, he had a huge impact on us winning a national championship. Everything I could tell you about Daniel Turpin is good. So, I mean, you know, we could talk all day long. And I, I mean, he's just a great kid. In Daniel's first season with the Beavers, he helped them achieve several of their own firsts. The school's first ever 46-win season, their first ever Pac-10 Conference Championship, their first ever NCAA Super Regional Championship. It was their first time in the postseason since 1986, and their first College World Series appearance in 53 years. But it was in the following season that Daniel Turpin, and the Oregon State Beavers would write their names in the history books by winning their first ever national championship. We don't win the 2006 national championship without Danny Turpin coming out on June 21st and, and taking Rice to the task, I tell you that. When it was his time to tell everybody how good he was, he got the ball on June 21st, 2006, and went six and two thirds against Rice and didn't give up a run. That's really impressive because they were 57 and 11, I think, at the time. And I do know they didn't give up a run, and I do know that Joe Paw came in behind him and went two and a thirds and didn't give up a run either. That's one of the greatest stories ever for those two guys to come in and shut out Rice, who was, I believe, the number one national seed. I've coached for 42 years in a variety of different sports at a variety of different levels, and the most proud I have ever been as a coach was watching uh, Daniel and Joe team up for a victory in their first College World Series championship and to see two McMinnville boys from the same class played on the same team grew up together playing on teams together combined for a complete game in the College World Series was pretty special. How many guys are walking around with a national championship ring on their finger? Not very many. They did it again the following year and Daniel threw the first eight and Joe closed in the ninth. So two years back to back on those College World Series teams they threw complete games and teamed up together. About as special as it gets. I would like to somebody, a historian to go find out if any two guys from the same high school pitched in the College World Series in one game, just the two of them, and shut anybody out in the history of the College World Series. I bet you it's never happened. After winning back-to-back -back national championships in 2007, a first for anyone in 10 years, Daniel was drafted by the San Francisco Giants of the MLB, where he spent the next nine seasons with five different organizations. As he got into professional baseball, got better. Velocity went up, he got stronger. He was a guy that was bannered around for big league rosters. He was in that rule five. Uh, there were some people that really, really liked him, thought he would pitch in the big leagues. The last year he played, which was last year, he was clocked at between 95 and 97 pretty consistently. He had plenty of stuff to pitch in the major leagues. Yeah, I know injuries always come into play, especially when you're a pitcher and you throw a lot. To get to the major leagues, you kind of got to be in the right spot at the right time and maybe get a break. And I'm just not sure if Daniel got the that break to make it to the major leagues, but definitely improved his skill set along the way and uh, gave himself a chance to get there. Upon his retirement in 2016, Turpin had achieved a Relief Pitcher of the Year award, a career winning percentage of 60%, had pitched nearly 500 innings, and a 333 career batting average. Today he enjoys his first season as the pitching coach for the McMinnville Grizzly Boys varsity team. He plans to eventually coach at the collegiate and professional levels so he can pass along the experience and knowledge that has made Daniel Turpin the winningest pitcher in Oregon State's history.